I destroyed a J-79 jet fighter engine. This is going to be my first vlog that I'm producing in English and I actually don't have any idea how it's going to turn out. Today I want to tell you something about a range flight that I had really a couple of years ago. And uh, this was a flight of four, a four ship F-104 Starfighters. Uh, the mission was to go to to go to Hechteren range and doing special weapons exercises. Special weapons means nothing else than nuclear bomb deliveries. That's the nickname, special weapons. Anyway, uh, the flight to Hechteren was uneventful and the range work was also uneventful until a little sound that I heard on my airplane on the uh, third run. I didn't pay too much attention to this sound because uh, it was a kind of a pop and uh, these sounds happened to, yeah, happened to be there once in a while, especially coming from the air conditioning system of the airplane. The flight continued uneventful. We went home after the force uh, nuclear weapons delivery. And let me tell you something about the weapons delivery here. This is kind of different from a conventional weapons delivery in so far as that the run-in is approximately 15 kilometers from an IP, from an initial point to the target. Once you roll out on final, on the run-in, you take up or you identify the target by means of your radar. There are a couple of blips up front, about 15 kilometers away, and you aim for these blips on the radar, and uh, this makes sure that you have the right run-in. The speed of the run-in is 0.92, which is approximately 540-550 knots at sea level, or approximately 270 meters per second. And of course, uh, at 200 feet, there is only little time for the defenders to pick up the airplane and fight against it. So this is one reason why it has to be that fast. The other reason is that you want to get far away from the point of detonation once you delivered the bomb. At this time I'd like to tell you something about the range work, uh, some information how this is going to be conducted. As a four ship, it's ideal to have each airplane at one of the corners of the pattern. That means if one starts to run in, the other one, the next one, should be off target at the same time, the third one should be starting to fly downwind, and the fourth one should be starting to go base for the final run-in. This is the ideal situation and during the mission everybody tries to keep these distances and this spacing from the other airplanes. The weapons delivery itself is called laydown and like I said it's going to be performed at 540-550 knots which is Mach 0.92 and at about 200 feet and of course at this speed it is hard to find the right spot for bomb release uh, remember at the time when i was flying 104s everything had to be performed 
manually inside the airplane so that meant that when we approached the target and the pipper the aiming device was on the target you hit the bomb button and the bomb went away of course at 270 meters per second you can make a mistake by hitting the button a little bit early or a little bit late but because it's a nuclear weapon it does not really matter if the bomb is one or two hundred meters away from the target after range work we were heading towards our home base and uh, the foreship rejoined with the leader and the flight home was uneventful. After landing we parked our airplanes at their parking positions and their shelters and after debriefing we went home for the weekend. It was a Friday. Next Monday at the squadron after briefing our flight safety staff officer approached me asking me Frank don't you have to tell me something I said no what should I tell you well he said then come with me so we went to the engine shop and he presented my engine my Friday's engine to me they had ripped it off the airplane and it was sitting on a bench and it didn't look very very good <laughs> the beginning of the engine is a big metal ring and from this metal ring there was a piece missing a piece that was about the size of my fist and this piece of metal went through the engine right through the engine to the end and exited the engine and caused a lot of damage and as I learned a little later this damage was so severe that the engine was beyond repair. I was kind of shocked because I did not notice or I did not realize actually that the little sound I heard on my flight was causing this damage otherwise I would have had to go to uh, an alternate field and do a precautionary landing there it is unbelievable that because of the damage to the engine it was working as if there was no damage at all we had power changes a number of power changes I even accelerated the airplane after this sound to another uh, run-in speed of 0.92 and everything was working okay all indications engine indications were okay no sounds no nothing so I was this much away from ejection and I didn't even notice it well there had to be a report filed for this incident my flight safety staff officer told me and uh, well I could only repeat what I had said before I didn't notice anything everything was normal on this flight and my flight safety staff officer told me nobody is going to believe you that you haven't heard, hadn't heard anything or I hadn't noticed anything about this damage he thought because it was Friday I really wanted to go home in order not to divert to another airfield and spend the week or at least a day there instead of going home and I could assure him no this was not my intent this was not my thoughts and he said uh, okay then write a report and uh, report that you hit a bird on final which I actually denied because uh, if you hit a bird on final at 180 knots final speed 
it is definitely not going to be such a damage as we experienced. So, this was my story about my engine that I destroyed unwillingly and unknowingly and I'm happy that I didn't have to eject. And now I am arriving at my destination and hope my story was interesting for you. Oh, 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 oh,